for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Brian, what are you doing? I'm just singing the American national anthem. Why? Because I like it and because I've been listening to it a lot lately. But who are the, the brave and... The free? The free. Who are the brave and who are the free? Who are the brave? Who are the free? That's a good idea. Let's, let's chat about that. <laughs> So, who are the free? Who are the brave? Good question, Abby. Here, because this is a part of the American national anthem, we are referring to American people. So, the free are the free American people. The brave are the brave American people. Okay? Now, you might be wondering, so why do I not use a noun here? Because the words free and brave are both, in fact, adjectives, normally. Okay? For example, free people or brave people. Okay? They are usually followed by a noun. So why am I putting an article before them and suddenly they look like nouns or they act like nouns? Well, in English, we can actually use words like free and brave to refer to groups of people. In this case, groups of Americans. And by putting the definite article, the, before the adjective, it changes the form of the adjective to a noun. So, the free, the brave. We call these type of nouns substantive nouns. So, besides the free and the brave, which are great examples, in English, of course, there are always many other examples, and I've written some of them on the board over here, and we're going to chat a bit about them. We can use substantive nouns to talk about groups of people in society. For instance, the rich and the poor. We generally treat substantive nouns as plural, so they are always followed by a plural verb. For instance, the rich have more money than the poor, or the poor are fewer in number in some parts of the world. Okay? We also can use it to talk about uh, different uh, age groups, for instance, the young and the old, okay? Of course, if you know the uh, young, you probably have heard about the young at heart, okay? Brian, um, I have a question. Yeah, ask away. They usually say he is young at heart. Good question, Abby. However, if we are talking about he is young at heart, we, talk, we, we are talking about one person only. Whereas the young at heart refers to the group of people who feel young at heart. Ah, I see. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So besides adjectives like these, we can also use it with nationalities because nationalities are also adjectives. So for example, I am Maltese and I am a part of a bigger group of people the Maltese. We have many teachers here at Malta Lingua who are from the UK, and some of them are from a bigger group of people, the English. Abby, my lovely colleague Abby, is from Wales, so she's a part of a bigger group, the Welsh. Okay? Have a look at this one over here. The Americans. Mm. Brian, I also have a question about this one. Why is there an S on the end here? The Americans, this is the Welsh, there's no S. The English, why is the Americans different? So here, the difference is the suffix at the end. So with, when the suffix at the end is ease, things like Japanese, Chinese, okay, there's no S. The Japanese, the Chinese. If the suffix is ish, Okay, the English, the British, etc., etc. Again, there is no S. But if your suffix is A-N or I-A-N, um, Moroccans, um, Americans, um, Dominicans, for example, you would put the and then you add an S. Thank you. Welcome. Another exception to keep in mind here are the Czechs. Okay, people from the Czech Republic, they are not the Czech 
but the Czechs. Okay, if I'm talking about the Maltese, is that a generalization? This is something that you may be thinking to yourself. The answer is yes. If I'm talking about the Maltese, I am referring to Maltese people in general, Maltese people as a whole, okay? Which is why we sometimes use this type of substantive noun to talk about stereotypes, which may or may not be a good thing. For example, I can say that the Maltese are very friendly or the Welsh are very musical. But of course, even just a minute ago, I said Maltese people. Yes, you can also say this. So if you remove the and you put people afterwards, you can simply say Maltese people are very friendly or Welsh people are very musical. Okay, finally, the last two. Okay, question, why do they both have capital articles and substantive nouns? Can you think a bit about that? Okay, really, really simple reason. Just like the nationalities above them, these are all proper nouns, okay? And therefore we must capitalize them. You might notice that even the article is capitalized. That is because this is actually the title this is the title of a book. This is the title of a musical. The Twits is a famous book by a British author, Roald Dull. Have you read it? If not, and you are around a B1 or a B2 level, you should read it. It's a fantastic book and it's great for some vocabulary. Fun fact, in English, the word twit is another way, maybe a slightly nicer way of calling someone an idiot. So if someone does something stupid, there's a word that you can use. Last one over here. Do you recognize this musical? Do you? Maybe if you don't recognize it, it's because we usually see it in another language. In French. Ah, uh, you know Les Miserables, don't you? Yes, Les Miserables is a famous musical. In English, The Miserable. Keep in mind that a lot of the time, most native speakers don't call it the miserable, but we call it le miserable, just like in French. Hey, Brian, so we talk about the English, the brave, the free, mm. but what are we? That is a good question. Who are we? What can we be? We are the, the, the... oh wait, they can let us know. Ah, yes. Okay, so leave us a comment down below with the, and an adjective. Let us know who you think or what you think our name should be with a substantive noun. Good, okay, so thank you very much for listening to our video today. If you liked us, give us a thumbs up. Share us with your friends. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for more wonderful videos just like this. So thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for the next and well, bye. Bye.